Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending January 26th. First up, this is from 1954 Shadow. Thank you for sending this. This is from New Scientist. Dung beetles navigate using the Milky Way. In tests on dung beetles before, they were testing to see how the dung beetles were able to coordinate their directions when they would steal a little dung ball they would want to get it away as quick as possible so that the other beetles couldn't steal it from them and in the past they've found that they use polarized light from the moon to be able to detect what direction they're going at and stay in a consistent straight line and get away from the original place they got their little prize from well they've just found out recently that the dung beetles even though they didn't think their eyes were capable enough they can actually follow the glow of the milky way when the full moon is not out the glow of the milky way itself can give them guidance and direction and it's interesting they did this study they did it in a planetarium as well too so they actually recreated the milky way in the, the correct orientation in the planetarium setting and then watched how these dung beetles were able to track and navigate so i thought that was really cool so if you get a chance, check out this article. It's very interesting, at least for us geeks it is. And this one comes from my friend Brightex. This is uh, from the site dslrpros.com, and it's the DJI Phantom GoPro aerial rig. But they also claim that it doesn't, doesn't just have to be a GoPro. This little uh, four, uh, four rotor quadcopter can lift pretty much, if it's the right size and weight, it can pretty much, uh, you can attach any kind of camera to it and have it lift and do the, the controls. But it's interesting the capabilities this has for price. Now, it's not a cheap rig. It's about $550. And I'll show you some pictures of it here. But the capabilities of it are pretty astounding. Um, not just does it have regular controls and self-balancing, which you pretty much need that. Trying to balance and coordinate these things on your own without self-balancing is very difficult to say the least. But that takes care of it for you. But also for the navigation part of it, when you're flying a quadcopter like that especially when it gets some distance from you it's hard to really tell what the orientation of the copter is as far as what's forward and what's back and what's left and right side of the copter so what they do is you can put it in a, under a control system to where every time you push forward it goes away from you and every time you push reverse it comes back towards you and then left and right will coordinate to, to going left and right and it will do it in a circular pattern so if you put the controls to the left it will circle around counterclockwise to you and if you put the controls to the right it will go clockwise around to you and you can also do a square pattern if you wish so with all of the different controls this has it would be a uh, pretty pretty easy for your average person to fly I would say if you can uh, actually afford to purchase this um, the other thing I like about it is it also has a low voltage feature too if it gets down to where it's uh, the battery life is getting really low instead of having the thing crash on you what it will do is it will go into a mode where it will do a safe landing and it will come back to the spot that it took off from and hover and then slowly land itself right about where it started so that's a really good safety feature especially with that kind of money involved and then there is another one, a tiny, tiny palm-sized quadcopter that Phil Cucarider sent me, that this is an innovative product that hasn't been actually manufactured yet, but it's ready for license, and this is from the Consumer Electronics Show. And the place that created this is called Always Innovative, and the press release here talks a little bit about that they've used as many open-source um, the open source most as most bleh, I can't talk they use as much open source hardware and software as they possibly can and although they don't want to produce it themselves they would like to license it to someone to have available by 2014 they claim it will be controlled by voice commands and it will also you can use it with your smartphone either your Apple or your Android smartphone um, I don't know about the flight time now. They claim this thing will follow you around for a period of time, but when it's, if it's in the palm of your hand, I'm just wondering, will they be able to find a battery that will last more than about maybe three to five minutes so that it can actually do a lot of these things? But um, They promote it as a new innovative way to film yourself when you're doing vlogs on social networks and stuff like that. I can think of a lot more uses, and I'm sure my geek friends can think of a lot more uses of a tiny little copter like this. Although when it gets to this small size, the concern I have about it, besides just the battery life, is the fact that if it was outside in the wind, I think this thing would really get blown around a lot. But maybe it's something we will see sometime in the future. And then, last up, this is another one from 54 Shadow. This is about a Star Trek-style tractor being created by scientists. This is from BBC News, 
and some researchers at St. Andrews University along with also some other researchers in China and NASA has even gotten into this a little bit. You can produce a tractor beam using laser light and the neat thing about it is you can tune this laser light to where it will pick out specific particles. In other words if you had a bunch of blood cells this thing could be tuned to where it would pick out the white blood cells and just draw the white cells towards the light beam and reject all the rest of them not have any effect on any of the rest of the particles. Um, one thing about this though is they said it's not going to scale up very well because when you get above microscopic size the heat transfer would get so great that it would end up heating and probably destroying whatever you were trying to use as a tractor beam so it's good for a small scale and uh, but I don't think this is one of those things you're going to be seeing they're creating a Star Trek tractor beam that's going to be pulling a, a car or a truck or any large spaceship around or anything but still rather interesting so if you get a chance check this out he also posted a little picture of Scotty from Star Trek down at the bottom part of this article here so anyway thank you to all my viewers because this would have been without my viewers this would have been a very very uh, sparse week I just was not able to find anything and it seems like every time a week happens like that uh, my viewers come forward with some really good stories so thank you very much it's because of you guys that I keep doing this and it's because of you guys that I'm able to keep doing this because of your help and I appreciate it very much so thank you everybody you have a good week and I will catch you next week.